Okay guys, last minute booking. There is a boat leaving. I will explain more later. Catching a boat, Green Island, snorkeling. We'll see what else. 105 bucks. I think uh, maybe that boat right there. I lucked out. That's right. What's that? That's it, yeah. Just booked this three minutes ago. So I lucked out. Perfect, that's the one. Watch So like five minutes to four, we should be back here or something like that? Yeah, ten, minutes. ten to four, okay. Thank you. So this is the Great Barrier Reef. You can see there on the boat, Great Barrier Reef. Right here, my first time seeing it in person. It stretches for about 2,500 kilometers from around Brisbane, Australia, up here. So we are sort of at the northwestern end of it, or close to it anyways. Just a little uh, taste of it. You can see the reef down there. I got the uh, snorkeling gear gonna jump in the water in a little while but uh, first thing is to get some food there is a restaurant in the middle of the island let's walk over there get a little taste of the island <laughs> all right all right all right that was a lucky break getting on that boat so I'm gonna tell the uh, story of the grand overview here so uh, I've been in Australia for like eight, nine days. So far been to Sydney, Katoomba in the Blue Mountains, Melbourne or Melbourne if you prefer, and then flew up here, direct flight, Melbourne to Cairns, three hour flight. Very cheap, I forget, like 150 bucks or something. Arrived yesterday, have the uh, hotel room there for three nights and then had nothing planned just uh, wanted to you know have a relaxing morning and then decide what i wanted to do so i woke up around 10 30 and then just lazed around for a little bit and then uh, got on uh, the internet and looked at boats to fitzroy island which had been recommended and i wanted to go to what i discovered was that there was a boat going at 1 30 
but I didn't have a ticket, had no idea if there would be a spot available. And so I got my button gear, got ready, and got over to the ticket office right near where I started the video at the uh, pier there. I got there about quarter to one, started asking around at the desks, and all of the Fitzroy Island tours were sold out. So it was looking like I was going to be out of luck for today. And then I asked again at another desk and they had this Green Island tour going in three minutes from that point. And so we were able to uh, get the ticket and they held the boat for me for a couple minutes and here we are. All right, where is that restaurant? Restaurant this way. Pretty nice little uh, operation they got here. Tiny island and a little uh, tourist zone with all the stuff. Pool, restaurant, restrooms. What are the options? Let's see, probably the usual stuff. Those guys are looking for food, and I have food. Gotta keep my eye on them. So, I got a uh, breakfast smoothie, fries, a veggie burger, and two scoops of boysenberry ice cream. It was all 47 Australian dollars, that is 31 bucks. No tables available, so I'm stuck sitting here. So, let's munch on this and then go see more of the island. So this veggie burger is kind of a disappointment. There's no actual patty. There's no like veggie patty. It's just veggies. Never quite heard of that. This is more like a sandwich, not a burger. It's like mushrooms, feta, pesto, tomatoes, lettuce, cheese. No, it's not for you. All right, now we're talking. All right, so let's adventure through the jungle here and get over to the beach and then do a walk around the island. I guess the uh, best snorkeling spot is over by the uh, pier on the other side. So I figured do a little walk here, walk off lunch, and then uh, jump in the water. Looking forward to seeing what's under there. And here we have the beach right up ahead. This island is small, but it really kind of packs a punch as far as having nice beaches and uh, snorkeling, reef, restaurant, swimming pool all the necessary facilities. Not bad. Looking forward to getting in that water. It is nice and warm today. March 31st. So it is now fall here in Australia. Or autumn as they say. Okay, I guess it's like a 30 minute walk or something around the uh, island. Got more stuff than I'd like to be carrying, but uh, that's the way it is. That's better, feet in the sand. Oh yeah, that water feels amazing. 
pretty nice and warm. Out there, mainland Australia. Out there, I don't know, is it Papua New Guinea or something? Straight north of here, a big stretch of ocean, and then Southeast Asia. And looks like we're at the tip of the island. Really cool spot here. You can find places to hang out all by yourself. Not a great place to swim though. Low tide. So as you can see, not a good spot to snorkel right here, but uh, on the other side, we'll give it a try. Hope we see some fishies and maybe some turtleies. almost around the island here. So I thought that I would talk a little bit about cans. So as you will see, once we get back, there will be a little bit of daylight left for me to show a bit of the town. The town is quite boring, really. It is nice. It is very like new modern buildings, very clean. It is a real tourist hub there. So there are no beaches in cans. It is worse than this. It is like a mud plain going out into shallow water and also there is the jellyfish problem and the crocodile problem. There are signs warning about the crocodiles. Now I think that it is quite unlikely for there to be crocodiles like right there in front of my hotel or whatever but uh, point being no swimming at the beach there. There are other places that you go for example Port Douglas which looks really really amazing and I'm definitely going to try to get up there tomorrow or the day after that or something. Hopefully rent a car. But uh, basically come to Cairns to do the day tours, to see what is in the area, the islands, the beaches that you will have to get to, and then the jungle exploring, waterfalls, creeks and rivers, and wildlife. There's a wildlife park called Hartley, I think, on the way to Port Douglas, which I will also try to stop at and see the crocs and I think kangaroos and other Australian wildlife. So there's a lot to see in the area. Very likely I will end up staying another day or two and then most likely head from here to Brisbane. So there's the pier and the boats. Looks like this is the spot to get into the water, try to see something. I guess the tide is going down, so it is getting shallower, so uh, not sure what's going to happen here. We'll find out. So the uh, wetsuit is not to keep warm, of course. It is for keeping the sun off of you, as well as the jellyfish. So apparently there can possibly be jellyfish around here. But uh, it is very unlikely. There's the box jellyfish and another one that I forget uh, how to pronounce it. The more uh, dangerous ones, or the more likely to run into, is the uh, ones that I'm not sure the name of. They're really small, so you can't see them. So uh, it's kind of optional whether to wear it, but, you know, better safe than sorry. Now, unfortunately, then, my GoPro is out of battery. I had checked it on the boat. It had 87% battery left then, and then now it just won't turn on. I opened up the latch and took out the battery and put it back in, and it's not turning on. Just one of the many reasons why I prefer to use the DJI Osmo Action 1 that I am filming with now, because it is so much less glitchy. There's always problems with the GoPro. So I don't take this one underwater. Some of you might remember I took one underwater in Greece, and it completely killed it dead. 
on the spot. So uh, it's a shame I won't be able to get some footage of the water, but uh, gonna get in there and see how it is. I will report back. So you literally didn't miss anything. If I'd filmed, I don't know that I would have even used the footage. So it was very shallow, like uh, two feet deep. There was grass. There were some fish, but uh, not a lot. Like, maybe I saw dozens. Some kind of colorful ones. The largest one was about three feet long. And it was all just about the same depth, just a couple feet, because it is low tide. So, uh, definitely not too impressive, but of course there are much better spots to see the fishies in the Great Barrier Reef. So, uh, we'll see where I end up in the coming days. So, since you might have gotten your hopes up to see some uh, colorful fish, let's show some. I will include a clip here from when I went uh, snorkeling with my friend Anna off the island of Cozumel, Mexico, three years ago. Enjoy. So the boat dropped me off right where I started, over there, here to the harbor area. And then my hotel is just a five minute walk up here. And you will see the beach, so to speak, of Can here. Or Cannes. I keep uh, confusing Cannes, Australia, with Cannes, France both of which are not pronounced the way that they seem like they should be. So there you can see the main bay. And it is just a muddy... plain... going up to the brown water, so nobody on the beach. A little actual sand over there, but it's still not really that nice. But uh, you can see beautiful mountains, nice, uh, you know, view, Ferris wheel, nice hotels. Let's go take a closer look. That doesn't look too inviting, but luckily, there is actually a place to swim. Right here, a public pool. That I guess is just free, just anyone can go anytime. Oh, yeah. 
gateway to the Great Barrier Reef. Designed by indigenous artist Brian Robinson to symbolize the diversity, resilience, and circular continuum of life on the Great Barrier Reef. The mirror finish allows people to recognize their symbolic reflection and reinforces the ethos of removing only memories of this world heritage destination. The Great Barrier Reef is a mosaic of some 3,000 coral reefs off the Queensland coast, stretching more than 2,300 kilometers from the islands in the Torres Strait south to Bundaberg. Visible from space, it is the world's largest coral reef system and the biggest structure on Earth made by living organisms. The Great Barrier Reef began to form about 20,000 years ago when the world was starting to emerge from the most recent ice age. Science has shown that the sea level around the Australian coast at that time was about 120 meters lower with a coastal plain separating the mountains from the sea. 120 meters, man, that would change things. That's like 400 feet. So, you can see your reflection. Okay, let's go find the crocodile sign. You'll see what I mean. I saw it while walking that way. Nice area here with restaurants, hotels. My hotel is right over there. Some information here about the native peoples of Australia. The King of Cairns. In the early 1800s, colonists began the practice of presenting gorgets or king plates to Aboriginal tribal leaders. These plates were presented in recognition of status and as a sign of treaty in an attempt to foster Aboriginal cooperation in the development of the colony. However, Aboriginal people did not recognize the plates themselves as such. No surprise there. Since the founding of Cairns in 1876, the district's settler population has been made up of many diverse nationalities. The first sugar plantation and mill in this northern port was established in 1879, called the Hapwa, meaning Chinese Joint Venture. Javanese, Malays, Indians, Sinhalese from Sri Lanka, and Japanese were amongst the indentured laborers who came to the district. During the 1890s, the plantation system gave way to small farmers. By 1886, the numbers of British and Europeans amounted to 49% of the total population of 4,650, with Chinese comprising 30% and South Sea Islanders 11%. So here's a bit of beach, but as you can see, it then turns to mud and the water doesn't look enticing either. So still not a great place to swim. Plus, you have to keep in mind the jellyfish and the crocodiles. So the jellyfish are a problem through the summer. Once the water temperatures decrease and it gets colder going into the winter, then they die off or whatever. But uh, it is still a problem now, potentially. I guess it's quite unlikely around here, but uh, the crocodiles also are an unlikely problem right here because they're watching for them and if they find a crocodile then they will take it elsewhere. But still, it makes it hard to relax when you're worried about getting stung or eaten. Warning! Octung baby! Crocodiles inhabit this area. Tax may cause injury or death. Keep away from the water's edge and do not enter the water. Take extreme care when launching and retrieving boats. Do not clean fish or leave fish waste near the water's edge. Camp well away from the water. So I guess that there is a death zone, it is called, of about six meters or 20 feet or so, in which you can be, you know, a little closer than this, whatever 20 feet is, from the water's edge and a crocodile could potentially get out of there and grab you before you can get away. And so you want to stay, you know, that far away. Of course it will depend on various factors. For example, the water depths. That looks really shallow right there. Probably a crocodile couldn't just like hide under right there. But uh, anyways, you want to keep that in mind if you are anywhere in the vicinity of crocodile habitat.
All right, I think that that is going to do it. Uh, wow. Quite a flurry of parakeets or whatever. Tai Chi in effect there, looks like. Okay, so uh, I'm going to head back to my room, take a shower, take a break, get to work editing. More coming from Cannes and Northern Australia. See ya. And I'll point out if you're looking for the cheap eats, this food court is the place. I got fish and chips here last night for $17 Australian. Pretty good deal, and it was great. That one right there.